Can a law be immoral? What is the relationship between law and morality? Pondering over these queries have occupied the minds of legal scholars for ages. Today, we delve into the profound thoughts and analyses of these questions by Lon L. Fuller, through his pivotal work, The Morality of Law. In his exploration of the complex relationship between law and morality, Fuller introduces us to two distinct types of morality. The morality of duty is about following fundamental principles. On the other hand, the morality of aspiration to striving for higher ideals. Fuller suggests that laws and decisions within a legal system should promote these principles and ideals. According to him, morality isn't just about fulfilling duties, it also has another dimension. While a legal system may not fully realize these aspirational goals, Fuller insists that it should at least aim to come as close to them as possible. Fuller acquaints us with inner morality and outer morality. The former emphasizes the importance of procedural fairness and adherence to legal principles, while the latter serves as a benchmark for legal systems. Fuller argues that for a legal system to be effective and legitimate, it must also uphold its own internal moral integrity. To sum up, we have two types of morality key to the legal system, the morality of duty and the morality of aspiration. The former pertains to the fundamental moral principles individuals are required to obey, while the latter extends beyond just abiding by duty, implying a pursuit of loftier ideals and values. Moreover, the inner morality of law is about the inherent principles that a legal system should uphold, and the outer morality represents the external moral standards independent of the legal system. According to Fuller, valid legal system not only aligns with these external moral standards, but also maintains its own internal principles. This dual obligation to both kinds of morality underlines the intricate connection between law and morality, highlighting the persistent challenge legal systems encounter in preserving moral principles. As we persist in our struggle with these multifaceted issues, Fuller's work acts as a beacon illuminating our path towards a more moral and just legal system. In the following section we examine Lon L. Fuller's magnum opus, The Morality of Law. The book consists of eight chapters, each delving into the intricate relationship between law and morality. Starting with the first chapter, The Morality of Law, Fuller sets the stage for subsequent discussions by introducing key themes like legal obligation and moral quality. In The Eight Ways to Fail to Make Law, the second chapter, Fuller lays out eight necessary criteria for legitimate legal systems, including elements of clarity, constancy, and congruence with official action. The case of the Spaluntian Explorers, the third chapter, sees Fuller utilizing a fictional case to probe legal positivism and natural law theory. The fourth chapter, Reason and Fiat in Case Law, explores the role of discretion in legal decision-making, with Fuller urging judges to preserve the law's inner morality through consistent and fair application of principles. The fifth chapter, the forms and limits of adjudication delves into the limits of adjudication and the function of legal institutions introducing polycentricity and the struggles of applying legal rules to sophisticated situations the sixth chapter the forms and limits of legislation scrutinizes the lawmaking process and underlines the need for procedural fairness in the penultimate chapter the problem of the grudge informer Fuller assesses a hypothetical scenario of a society-society compelling citizens to inform on their neighbors, igniting a debate on ethics and the balance between individual rights and societal needs. The book concludes with the eighth chapter, The Internal Morality of Law, where Fuller re-emphasizes the importance of inner morality in maintaining the validity and efficiency of legal systems. Each chapter of The Morality of Law provides a distinctive perspective into the principles directing legal decision-making, along with the inherent complications in their application. As we further delve into this discourse, let's keep these insights at the forefront and aim to comprehend the profundity of Fuller's work. Voiceover. Lon L. Fuller's The Morality of Law is renowned for its in-depth exploration of legal philosophy. However, it has also been met with considerable criticism. Critics maintain that his work leans towards formalism with an excessive focus on procedural requirements and formal legal principles. They suggest that this focus could potentially undermine the substantive justice or moral considerations in individual instances. Moreover, they posit that Fuller's analysis of the inner morality of law gives an idealized picture of legal systems, neglecting the intricacies and practical aspects of legal practice. Critics also note a lack of engagement with the perspectives of legal realism, which emphasize the role of social, 
political, and economic factors in shaping legal outcomes. There are also concerns that Fuller's emphasis on procedural fairness and the internal coherence of legal systems doesn't adequately address broader social justice issues such as inequality, discrimination, and oppression. His work is seen as lacking sufficient consideration of the cultural and historical contexts in which legal systems operate. Regardless of these criticisms, it's important to acknowledge the morality of law as a seminal work in legal theory. It continues to inspire debates, reshape our understanding and mold our perspectives on the intricate relationship between law and morality. Critics have encouraged fruitful discussions about the suitability and sufficiency of Fuller's framework in tackling present-day legal and moral challenges. In light of these criticisms, let's keep an open mind and strive for a comprehensive understanding of the morality of law. Voiceover. Although it's faced critique, Lon L. Fuller's The Morality of Law is still a significant piece in contemporary legal and moral discourse due to several reasons. First and foremost, it provides insightful reflections on the ethical principles that should direct legal verdicts and the establishment of fair laws. The book highlights the significance of integrity, fairness, and respect for individual rights within the legal framework, anchoring us in the basic principles of legal ethics. It also brings to light vital issues about the equilibrium between legal structure and substantive justice. This conversation continues to hold relevance as our societies strive to ensure procedural fairness and equitable justice distribution. Thirdly, Fuller's engagement with the positivism and natural law theory debate continues to be a focal point in modern jurisprudence. The friction between these two perspectives remains a motivating factor in numerous legal discussions and conclusions. Fourthly, his analysis of the legal interpretation and application challenges is especially relevant in today's intricate legal environment. The work urges us to contemplate how laws ought to be interpreted and applied to guarantee justice, especially in scenarios where legal directives may not offer clear or satisfactory outcomes. Through intriguing hypothetical situations, the book urges readers to wrestle with ethical dilemmas in law and society. It compels us to critically think about intricate moral matters such as the boundaries of legal coercion, the role of discretion in the legal system, and the moral obligations of legal practitioners. Wrapping up, the morality of law remains a cornerstone text in legal philosophy, providing enduring insights into law's moral dimensions and the challenges of upholding the integrity and legitimacy of legal systems. Despite the critiques, Fuller's work continues to inspire, provoke, and guide our comprehension of the complex interaction between law and morality. The Morality of Law by Lon L. Fuller can be relevant in Nepal, as in any other country, for several reasons. Firstly, it provides valuable insights into the ethical principles that should guide legal professionals in Nepal. Specifically, Fuller's work highlights the importance of integrity, fairness, and respect for individuals' rights, which are essential for maintaining the legitimacy of the legal profession. Secondly, Nepal's legal system is undergoing reform and development to address issues of access to justice, human rights, and governance. Through offering critical perspectives on legal formalism and substantive justice, Fuller's work can contribute meaningfully to these efforts. His work raises important questions about how laws should be interpreted and applied to ensure justice particularly in a rapidly changing legal landscape. Thirdly, although the morality of law is grounded in a Western legal tradition, its principles can still be adapted to the cultural and contextual realities of Nepal. This underscores the universal importance of ethical principles in law, irrespective of cultural or societal differences. Fourthly, the morality of law can as a valuable resource in legal education and scholarship in Nepal. It encourages critical thinking about complex moral issues in law and society, which is crucial for cultivating an informed and engaged legal community. Finally, Fuller's exploration of the inner morality of law can contribute to promoting ethical governance practices and upholding the rule of law in Nepal. His work underscores the necessity of moral integrity in the administration of justice, integral to the promotion of good governance and the rule of law. Overall, while the specific legal and cultural context of Nepal may require adaptation and contextualization, the morality of law can still offer valuable insights and perspectives that are relevant to legal practice, education and governance in Nepal.